a lighter look at the new ham radio license. Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. On the 21st of February 2024, the UK Licensing Authority issued radio amateurs with a brand new license. The call signs remained the same. Well, actually they didn't remain the same. But anyway, I'll come to that in a minute. The call signs remained the same, but the license conditions have changed quite noticeably quite radically. Now, some ham radio operators in the UK, I think the majority, are quite pleased with the changes. There's a few that aren't quite so happy with the changes, but there's always the few, isn't there? Now, let's look at the call signs. In the UK, we have a prefix which indicates where we are in the United Kingdom. If we're in Scotland, we have a prefix GM, Golf Mike. If we're in Ireland, we Northern Ireland, we have a prefix Golf India. If we're in Wales, we have prefix GW and so on. So it's all very obvious whereabouts in the UK you're located. And if you happen to be in England, you just have G, you don't have a prefix. Which means to say that those in England have got a bit of an advantage. They've generally speaking got one less character in their call sign, which must make it easier to win contests because you've got a shorter call. So the licensing authority over here, Ofcom, they decided that under the new license conditions, you no longer have to use your prefix. So if, for example, you were GM3ZZZ, I hope that doesn't exist. I don't think it does. So if you were Golf Mike 3 zzz you could, if you want to, sign yourself as Golf 3 zzz You've lost one character. Makes your call sign shorter, and it means to say you're more competitive with your English compatriots. And of course, the same with Golf India in Northern Ireland, got GW in Wales, and so on and so forth. Uh, GD, Isle of Man. So you can actually miss out that prefix. Well, I suppose that's quite reasonable, really, isn't it? But you know, I can see a few problems there. Let's, for example, Think, let's, let's, let's say that GM3ZZZ, apologies if GM3ZZZ does, does exist, but anyway, I'll stick with it now. If your call sign is Golf Mike 3 zzz and you're in a contest, you think, OK, I'm going to shorten my call sign to Golf 3 zzz which is fine. And people work you in the contest, and then they check on QRZ.com and think, wait a minute, I've worked a pirate. G3ZZ doesn't appear. It doesn't exist. It doesn't come up in the search. I must have been working a pirate. The same with GW3ZZZ. He misses his prefix out, thinks he'll do well in the contest, and then all of a sudden, half the world thinks he's a pirate because he's not in, the, in, in QRZ.com. And then what about the call books? Well, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Where are you going to be in the call book? If you're GW3ZZZ, where are you going to be? Well, presumably under GW3ZZZ. Makes sense, doesn't it? After all, you've always been in the call book under GW3ZZZ. But then you're in the contest and you miss out the W and you become G3ZZZ. Once again, everybody thinks you're a pirate or even not in a contest. You're on the air and you think, oh, I'm going to miss out the W anyway. I don't like it. I'm going to be G3ZZZ. And you're having a contact with Joe Bloggs, who's always on the air. Joe Bloggs is on the air an awful lot. You're having a contact, contact with Joe Bloggs, and he looks up in his call book and he thinks, I've just worked a pirate. G, G3ZZZ doesn't appear. Well, he doesn't appear because he's actually GW3ZZ. But the reason he's not GW3ZZ is because he thought the call sign was too long. So he shortened it. And because he shortened it, he no longer appears in the call book now. And he doesn't appear in QRZ.com either. So he's got to make two entries in QRZ.com to avoid the confusion. And presumably, he'll have two entries in the call book. It's all rather confusing, isn't it? But you know, he doesn't stop there. They've made changes to the suffixes. I mean, in the past, we were operating as G3ZZZ. 
who, by the way, is probably a pirate. No, he's not a pirate. No, no, he's just missed his GW call sign out, isn't he? Yeah. Anyway, we were operating as G3ZZZ stroke A, which means to say you're at an alternative, to, uh, which means, <laughs> I'll get that right now, which means to say that you're at an alternative address, or you could be GW3ZZZ stroke P, you're portable, or stroke M because you're mobile, or stroke MM because you're maritime mobile, or stroke AM because you're aeronautical mobile. Well, that's reasonable. I think we've grown up with that. We understand that. But now you can use other suffixes. In actual fact, you, you, apparently you can use what you like. So you can be G3ZZZ stroke QRP. Nothing wrong with that at all. I've got no problem with that at all. Makes perfect sense. You could be G3ZZZ stroke QRO to upset the QRP people. I suppose there's nothing wrong with that either. But then, where do you go on from there? You could invent suffixes which says GW3ZZZ stroke DG down the garden. Possible, isn't it? Or oh, stroke IP in the park. No, we won't go any further. But you could start to invent what appears to be a call sign, couldn't you? You could be GW3ZZZ stroke VC4HW. Now, who knows what VC4HW stands for? It may be something personal to the guy. But it's going to cause confusion on the air, isn't it? If you can actually, apparently, come up with what appears to be a new call sign. And all these people will start working you. They look in the call book on, on QRZ.com. Again, he's a pirate. Doesn't exist. What the hell is he playing at? So with these suffixes, I can see all sorts of problems. I can see some quite jovial um, suffixes, quite jokey ones and quite smart ones. But I'm not quite sure where it all ends. So we've got problems with the prefixes. And we've got problems with the suffixes. You can take tablets for it, of course. Then what about the power limitation? You know, the power limitation has gone up. Foundation licenses go from 10 watts to 25 watts. It's about 3 or 4 dB gain. Those in the uh, intermediate license that had a 50 watt limit have now got a 100 watt limit, got another 3 dB. And those with a full license have got a quite a nice increase from 400 watts to 1,000 watts, one kilowatt. Oh, watch out, you guys in the US. We're, we're catching up with you now. <clears throat> but you know, that is interesting in itself because if you look at the license conditions, the new license conditions, it says that is the power delivered to the antenna. Now, that means to say that if you're running 25 watts and you've got a fairly longish garden, and you've got 3 dB loss on your antenna run at 14 megahertz, which is possible if you're using pretty ropey coax, I suppose, and you've got a tower at the end of the garden. But if you're losing 3 dB, you can legally run 50 watts rather than run 25 watts, you can run 50 watts. And likewise, if you're an intermediate license holder and you've got this same bit of ropey coax and a tower at the end of the garden, lucky you, you can run 100 watts because you're losing 3 dB in the feed to the antenna. So if you double the power, you lose 3 dB, you've got 200 watts, but the time it gets to the uh, antenna is 100 watts, so you're legal. And the same with the high power full licenses. If you're running a uh, ropey bit of coax, gracious me, what with a 1,000 watts, you run a bit of ropey bit of coax. I bet there's some running ropey bits of coax down the garden and up a tower, and you've got the same 3 dB loss, then you could actually legally run 2,000 watts at the transmitter end on the basis that you're only delivering 1,000 watts to the antenna. With this bit of ropey coax, I'm not quite sure that you will even get 1,000 watts to the antenna. In fact, my bet is that it won't be long before you have to replace that ropey bit of coax. But it's worth remembering that the power limitation is not what comes out of your transmitter, it's what you deliver to the antenna. Let's take that a stage further. 
28 megahertz. I bet that some stations running a long length of coax where they're losing more than 3 dB. What about 2 meters? What about a long length of coax on 2 meters? Gosh, you could be losing 4 or 5 dB down the coax. The mind boggles at what sort of power level you could run with a linear on the VHF bands. But I think that should come with the health warning. Anyway, there we are. A bit of confusion. A bit of confusion, isn't it? Um, but it's also rather interesting to find out what will happen. So that's my take on the new amateur license conditions Ofcom. Bit of a light-hearted look at it, but I'm sure that there'll be a lot of discussion and a lot of pondering. Can I do this or can I do that? And oh, by the way, if you happen to have a foundation license and an intermediate license, and then you've got your full license, you can only hold one of those. Now, if you really like that foundation license, you really thought that was, I, it, it, I'm, I'm really nostalgic about that license. Well, you can keep it. Get rid of your foundation, get rid of your intermediate license, get rid of your full license. There's a catch. You can only run 25 watts. So perhaps you might have to think about that. Perhaps after all, you will drop that foundation license and go and use your new shiny full license with 1000 watts. There we are. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget, by the way, Waters and Stanton, um, come what may, we are happy to sell you good high power linears. We're also happy to sell you good coax cable to replace that ropey coax cable that you're losing 3D bin down the guard with. Oh, by the way, if we send you good coax, you're going to have to reduce your power at the transmitter end. But there, may, there again, you can use a cheaper linear perhaps. Anyway, thank you, for your, thank you for your support on this channel. Thank you for your support at the shop. Much appreciated. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio, take care, and I look forward to seeing you as usual in the next video. Bye for now.